Jim's actually at two meetings at once, so um, he's uh, he's actually recording two meetings. One is for the <laughs> Life Collective. Yeah, he's gonna start. This is Jim's clone, so we we discussed a lot. We are recording. All right. Anyway. So I don't have uh, much uh, news. Um, there's, uh, we had the holidays and um, we got all of the uh, October signatures. I got to get that done uh, for October and soon it's going to be November time. So um, there was a concern about the rock price. I don't know who placed that there. Um, does anybody want to speak about the rock price? All right, going once, going twice. I, I don't think we should be promoting rock, uh, especially when it's so low right now, because that's going to look like we were trying to profit from a rise in the price of rock. So... I didn't tell you to buy it now. Okay. <laughs> so can I ask a question about that since you guys brought it up? So yes. I had, I had a little bit of a tete-a-tete -tete with uh, Greg yesterday because, uh, you know, he was on his, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to have the validator sale if uh, transaction fees are paid in rock and at the current rock price, uh, we'd have to increase our projections of transaction speeds more than 10 X for somebody to make some kind of, at least the original profit margin that we were talking about. Right. And, and he told me not to look at KuCoin's price because it's not right. It doesn't reflect the value. And, you know, being a market technician, I'm thinking price always reflects value. And he's convinced that you need to take, some kind of moving average based on the two private sales that were done. So I'm just wondering what other people feel about that. Uh, I, I have some thoughts. Um, I, I feel that except for the people who, who are, are now still interested in the project and getting in now, as far as all your you know, the return on your investments, uh, they, they pretty much been decimated. So what we're looking at now is, is uh, except for the new faces and they'll have to, they'll have to explain themselves. But for the rest of us, you know, we, we're asking, you know, why am I still here? Um, and so, you, you really have to start thinking about the, the possibility that we're just going to have to drive this thing on principle uh, because it's good, because we don't control the price of rock. Uh, it, the market is insane. It could be, you could invest right now and you could see yourself become a millionaire overnight and you could lose it all. Uh, two weeks later. That's that's how crazy the market is right now. So I, I totally agree. I'm trying to figure out how we're, you know, the, the way our decentralized blockchain is going to work is we have to have validators. And the only reason people are going to validate, either because they have some uh, kind of fundamental belief in our project, based on decentralization, et cetera, or it's a money-making endeavor for them because they're going to invest a million, two million, three million dollars uh, into building out their infrastructure, which means that if they have that kind of money, they have to be somewhat smart as uh, business owners, which means they're gonna look at how much money they're gonna make off validator fees. So going back to my original question, does anybody have a sense of how we could talk to a business person about what the value, what our value proposition is of rock 
that would be different than what the market price is now? Well, I, you know, I would say, you know, it comes back to belief that our chain uh, will be useful. And um, I mean, the uh, hey, mathematics Dave, can you go on, please? are pretty strong that David? this is a fundamental step forward in computer architecture period. And um, uh, if you believe that this is going to get used, then staking the network is a way that you can make income forever on your rock and it's worth having it. And but it'll be a loss for a while until the price of rock goes back up, at least 10 X based on the current validator. I, I, I don't know, Ned, um, I guess, listening to uh, to the discussion you're talking about something that's three five six months into the future and it's just hard to get visibility out that far yeah, yeah I think, I think there is that, there is there in one sense we need to think about our strategy as we go and think that far in the future can we do it incrementally, or does it have to be done uh, in bit, in these bigger chunks like Greg and Ned seem to suggest? I always thought it could be done in incrementally, but I don't know anything about these these validation networks. Well, the, the valid the, the validator in the box that Greg is arranging with um, what's her uh, Mike Block. Um, yeah, um, this uh, uh, definitely lowers the bar, uh, particularly if someone is going to validate using cloud services. And, you know, if there's a shortage of, of validators um, on the network, um, uh, it would be worthwhile to run a validator in a box and and stack it and uh, maybe pool with your friends rocks for staking uh, so that um, uh, I think this is a major development. I mean, we were looking at you know the validator in the box idea uh, in Tampa Bay, and we still may uh, develop that further, although the uh, activity has been slow there. Um, but this, uh, 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 you know, this effort may be very complementary to that. Um, uh, yeah, and Jim, just so you know, I've, I've been talking up Tampa Bay Shard, uh, every opportunity I get with Greg and others. So I think they're aware of it uh, because I've been really promoting that because I think that is what we definitely need to do uh, one from decentralizing and also from allowing people to pool. Uh, I think that's going to be a huge win. It's hard to have a, it's hard to call ourselves decentralized if everybody though is running on Google cloud or Amazon web services. I, I don't know. Ned, um, it, in terms of bootstrap or whatever, it seems perfectly fine. Um, the For outsiders, you, you mentioned a lot about people bringing new money in. And, you know, if I were an outsider, I'd look and say, this whole space is crazy. Um, are there going to be defections? Is there going to be enough manpower left to bring anything to make it work or not? And I worry about that much more than about the value proposition at this point, Gary. Yes, uh, Alan, you're 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 kind of you're kind of getting to my point of we're going to need to start building a culture here that can uh, guarantee con continuity of this thing. Yeah, we're not in we're not in it for the money now. Most of us, it, it, we've got to be here for the love. 
Well, you know, Gary, I, I, I don't want to totally disagree with that. I'd like that to be true. But a lot of the developers are younger and they have ambitions, they have families, they have whatever it, it is that, um, you know, need to put food on the table. So that's a concern to me. Yeah, love, love. I agree with you, Gary. Love doesn't feed your family. Uh, you, you, you know, it was said earlier that we have enough money to get us through the end of March limping. Uh, and we'll wait for the community debrief meeting. Uh, but that doesn't appear to be the case, huh, Ned? <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of just want to wait for Kelly to go through, you know, but, uh, you know, feature complete, if we get to feature complete by the end of March, you know, then we saw of testing, bug fixing, we, you know, we're going to need some kind of value. And, and I hear what you're saying, Gary, and I, I actually agree with you. I don't personally believe in you have to be fully decentralized, especially at the beginning, uh, to call yourself a decentralized platform. And many other projects have kind of done it like you suggested in stages, and I'm all for that. Uh, but we, we need some people <laughs> running validators even on the root chart, right? And so that can't all be co-op run machines to some degree whatever that degree is so you know so we have issues and you know we're still out there trying to get money right trying to raise money so i expect you know if, if they can really demonstrate the shard in a box or the validator in the box idea that all of a sudden um uh We'll have a much of a reduced problem uh, yeah. getting validators because people have rocks and they want to earn income on them. You know, if well, what else are they going to do with them? Right. <laughs> For this thing to grow uh, like we want it to grow, we will ultimately need a killer app like Greg is dreaming of with the the R song. But yes. But he doesn't I, want to. I, he doesn't want to grow that. I agree with you, and he said we're not a music company. But 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 killer apps grow virally, I and I think we can start the killer app with what we've got now. And I think people can see the birth of the of the viral killer app. If we will, you know, just just put our thinking caps together and 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 come up with it. It 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 it. I mean, Greg has one vision of it, but sadly, that vision includes a a, a working R chain. But we we also have to have a better vision of what what the killer app is that we're heading towards and start planting the seeds for, for that thing now. So, yeah. so more and more people can recognize it. Yeah. So, so two, two points. Uh, one, uh, it's going to take white block three to four weeks to develop uh, their uh, shard in the box. You know, part of that is the whole scripting engine uh, and uh, I am pushing that once it's developed in three to four weeks, they come on the community debrief and they demo the whole thing. Cause I think that's nice. going to go a long way and really get people excited. But I want everybody to, I, I think Greg signed the contract yesterday, but I want you all to realize it's, <clears throat> they said it's going to take them three to four weeks of development. So, you know, we just got to be a little patient on that. So that it'd be a great new year's present. <laughs> uh, and then uh, to your point, Gary, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I think we should be throwing everything into our song and 
not announce to the world we don't want to become a, a, a song platform. Instead, let's try to get some of these deals and get artists, like famous artists, you know, not Imogene Heap, you know, famous artists. You know, we need one or two famous artists and get them on our song. Uh, and, and I agree. And then people will just come out of the woodwork. Gary, is, is our song the killer app that you were talking about, or do you have some other ideas for killer apps? Hmm. Gary, Gary, you're on mute. Gary, Gary you're on mute. I, I, have, uh, I have many ideas, um, and, and I tend to try to emphasize them in my communications. Um, I don't know, I don't know how it's different if I communicate them here than in the text-based channels, but. Well, I don't really read Discord myself, so I'm, I'm not aware. But um, consider, cons Ned, to, to your point right there, Consider the possibility that there are people that cannot communicate in these channels at all. I barely can. I told Jim before, I can't think and make words come out, out of my mouth at the same time. So I can't express to you here what I want to express best. Yeah. But to Alan's questions, do I have any ideas uh, for killer apps, yes. Read the text channels. Let's okay. let's continue this conversation in the in the the All Discord right. chat. Ty Tyler, um, you often have some ideas about uh, the app world. Do you have anything to say here? Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about the the sort of the killer app concept for a bit of time. And Alan, I think you you as well have had um, experience or work that's been done within the sort of music and entertainment industry, and I've I've done a bit myself. And the thought, you know, with with respect to Ned's point of being able to get like a really big sort of A list artist, it's from my experience, it's really hard. I mean, for a bunch of different reasons: the the time consideration, the sort of the fame aspect, the monetary consideration. It's, it's not impossible, but I don't personally believe that in the time frame we're sort of talking about and, and looking towards that it's a viable solution to try to go after a, a sort of a mainstream artist in that capacity. Um, and that's just from my experience. I, you know, I don't know exactly what we could sort of offer from like a value proposition standpoint that could change that there's always that possibility um but i do have a couple reservations alan i don't know if you have any other thoughts considering i, I think you've had experience yeah, uh, gary, gary seems to you, you want to say something right now yes uh you know we could get a list entertainers here right now if any one of us knew an A-list entertainer that we could explain our chain to. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or if you could come up with someone that you knew would bring value to the project and they respected your opinion in some other area. Okay. So I want to say something that's a little different. Um, I think Jim's idea of the killer app is more similar to mine. It's not an app per se. It's the idea of using our chain as the world computer. And um, I feel like we have uh, Google and AWS and, and Azure as examples. And I feel like that uh, our chain is really going to show its value when it's shown to be a, a combination of internet and compute resource that is just applicable. The person, the people that are doing that are Tron. The people that are doing that are people that we don't have 
so much technical respect for, but they're grabbing the megaphones and saying, uh, abandon ETH, come to Tron, you know. So I don't know, I, that's, to me, that's where the future is. Can I say something? Sure. Uh, on this idea of attracting someone here, you know, a megastar, uh, There's also the idea of attracting someone here who is involved in the kind of culture that would be beneficial to our, uh, what we're doing here. And by that, I, I uh, you know, in, in the random and, uh, the random and humor channel, I'm posting some things there, which, uh, I mean, in in some countries they would build statues to me, and I have the you know I probably have the ability to bring people in who. I respect more than those outrageous statements that I, you just heard come from my mouth. Okay. Um, so, so another. Uh, okay. Not sure exactly what Rich Rich is saying, but. Uh, you know, another killer app potential is what uh, Chris Williams has developed with his coin faucet uh, and apps related to that, which is really exciting, right? You know, his bar app idea. No, right? you, Ned, you want to describe it? Yeah. Okay. So Chris Williams created this faucet, which runs on a Raspberry Pi, right? And so his idea is that you take a Raspberry Pi running an R node right, and you put it in a bar, and then it randomly drops coins to people who are sitting in the bar drinking. And then, you know, so bar A has bar A coin, or for simplicity, let's say we're, we're dropping rock. And then they could go to the barkeep and say, give me a free drink, because I now have the rock to pay for it. At the same time, he's going to, all his friends who sitting with are buying around. I mean, it's, it, it's an amazing value proposition and it's really a, a low barrier cost wise for the barkeep to enter into that arrangement because for like a hundred bucks, they could get a Raspberry Pi installed running in our node and you know, at a minimum. Uh, do you, do you want to, do you want to join that particular culture? It's a viably economic culture and it <laughs> generates a huge amount of money. I but think it's going to be your drinkers that, that, that join us so in the bars. I'm not talking okay. about, Gary, you, know, Gary. But, you know, that's like the first implementation. And if you, and I think it was on the community <laughs> meeting about a month ago where I said, you could take that concept and now you can install an R node server at the SAP center down in San Jose. And now you could drop tokens good for uh, some famous artist song running on the R song platform. Because it's all coming from the same infrastructure. So doing it in a bar or a restaurant, you know, you could do it at Chuck E. Cheese, you know, right? You, you know, when the I, I, I was of the father are sitting there while their kid is playing, I could be collecting rock as I'm sitting in Chuck E. Cheese yeah. and go buy a free pizza. I, I don't know. I'm just saying it, the concept is cool. And it leads to a lot of other interesting business opportunities. But but I say we eat our own dog food. We we do these killer apps in environments that that immediately bring us the users of our product into our culture so they can help build it. I yeah. think that you know. Okay, and, and, and along that lines, you know, I would like to start a channel and try to attract the kind of people here I think would help build the, the, the platform, but I'm not allowed to. So the first, 
the first thing is, right, we need to finish the platform. Right, without the platform, we can't do this. I, I, Rich, I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, try to interpret what you've typed. And if I'm wrong, you can, you're welcome to correct me. But I think that uh, Rich is saying that we have um, implementations of what I think our chain will be good for. Um, they're called Zoom, they're called Discord, they're, they're called Google Apps. Um, these are the kinds of things that will be supported by the world computer that our chain provides. Of course, the our chain version will be more decentralized, will be less subject to misuse, maybe. Um, but we have a lot of infrastructure that we could build on today. For instance, the app Gary just talked about, you could do that today very easily. Rich, are you able to talk? Is this, I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I mean, that's, I come from a, a kind of um, completely, uh, you know, a very much a cultural perspective and not particularly a technical perspective. But I'm just watching, like, the app that we use most intensively in this particular culture. I mean, if we talk about eating our dog food, like Gary just said, are these, um, these media communication, these like live streaming with visuals. Um, I'm watching podcasting blow up. I'm watching all these like point to point uh, decentralized broadcasting apps be embraced globally by the culture. And it seems like, it just seems silly to me that we've got app developers, you know, organizing cars, Teslas and stuff like that. And, I haven't heard anybody doing voice over internet protocol type um, versions or like everybody complains about Discord and I know there's been an attempt to migrate people to CoLab, et cetera. I've, I've gone over there, it's a little bit um, difficult. And that's, you know, that's the way it works. Um, people work with a stupid platform because everybody's there <laughs> working with it and they actually, they want to be with the other people. That's what we actually are motivated by is, is the social coordination aspect of the rhetoric. So, um, so Rich, let me ask you a question. Why does Discord, or, or what does it look like to build Discord on a blockchain? Are you thinking- well, that's, my, that's my issue. It's like, I'm not, I'm like, I mean, I guess it's, I, because what does the blockchain do? If the blockchain is just the ledger, I mean, you can, you can add to it in that, you know, obviously you qualify people to participate. You probably also have levels of indexing. So your archiving considerations might go to the blockchain. Um, you might have like working some kind of, it, some kind of uh, text reader. Um, it'd be great to have voice recognition going with all of these uh, chats that we make um, with like a, uh, art of, uh, a machine learning editor program that um, so we can sort through all the conversations that ever happened on our chain and be able to find best intelligence to answer the question from the qualified community. Um, it's all about qualified community. I mean, it's, it's yeah. really, I mean, I think the, I think the um, life ID work, the self-sovereign identification, and then leveraging the particular communities of trust that come. I think music is an excellent resource for that because you're dealing with interiority put into the world in a very subjective way. So it's a very quick read in a kind of um, just information about the world. So I go along with, with Greg's interest in music, but Greg, you know, anyway, I don't want to get into the Greg problems and I don't really want to get into the money problems because I think, I think the, you know, the, 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 the work that Greg did to produce this um, technology um, to be open to concurrency uh, and the fact that, you know, pretty much we got this far, save for a few million dollars, um, is it means a lot. And, um, and so I just, but then I look at like, okay, how do, the most, you know, like go back and back and back to our most important resource is time. So in all my months, I've been on our chain now, you know, I'm a late guy to the party, but I got introduced at the end of July and I've spent, you know, I don't know, 60 hours, 70 hours, 80 hours a week, considering thinking about our chain, meeting people, having conversations, hoping the money comes in. And during all that time, um, you know, I've been Zooming and, and Discording and like it just, I think that's eat your own dog food 
which can, you know, is a nasty way of saying things like, um, there's, a, the, there's a hermetic knowledge statement, which is that um, sacred geometry, people know this one probably, sacred geometry is the relation of the microcosm to the macrocosm. Like my problem with um, seeing our chain as a winning social coordination vehicle is that it's so poorly coordinated at a social level. And so it's like, ha like, it should be that the first 10 minutes, I mean, I see the hope. I see the hope. So that's why I've continued to engage. So let me just. Anyway, you know, end of rant. No, no, no. It's, it's great. I, I just want to say there's no way that we could store every single text message that goes on Discord on the blockchain. I, if that's an impossibility, then I'll, I'll be quiet. No, no, no. It's impossible. You couldn't afford yeah. it. No human being could afford it. And, and I mean, the stuff is, but, but isn't it, it's all out there somewhere. And then if you have a place and you have a resource and you have a sorting. Because it's really cheap to store it on a SQL server or, a, or on a Amazon Redshift. Uh, but so then what if there, where's the, where's the card catalog? It's, it's, you, you couldn't afford to, it would be a billion the, dollars. To not even the data, you can't keep the reference. Even if the people wanted, that's what that's what brought them to the place. You it's could not afford to store it on the blockchain. Now you could come up with a hybrid solution, right? But you could not store that data immutably on the blockchain. No, are you I'm talking sorry, about sorry. the tax Ned that's on Discord? I'm sorry. Ned, are you speaking of the text on Discord? Because I, I don't think that I uh, would agree with that statement. The amount of text that's on Discord. I believe could be stored on blockchain for a lot more than it costs to store it in Discord, but for not very much money. So this Am is, I wrong in that? I think so. And this is one of the problems is, you know, what does it cost to store, right? Rent is oh. not going to be in the MVP. So one, data is immutable, right? So that's a good thing for transactions, but maybe not a good thing for other data that could be edited or changed. Uh, no, nothing lasts forever. We, you've got to you've got to somehow you know uh, envision constraints, uh, right. constructive constraints early on, and build within them. But 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 yes, uh, uh, it. But but you know, uh, Ned and Rich, I don't think you want to store all of this on the blockchain. You you want to store. I mean, uh, much of this stuff you see here is, is just pure liability. Why would anyone want to keep it? Uh, it, it you know, some government is going to come in and say, you can't, you can't store this stuff indefinitely. Look what people can do out there searching your, your public uh, uh, repository. I, I agree. But you do want to, there, there, is, there is metadata that we would all share freely and that governments would let us get away with without without disrupting our 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 building out without our scale without disrupting our scalability yeah no it's a great point and you know we probably want identity right like uh you know self-sovereign identity that is perfect for the blockchain T tyler um you want to you it would be okay to give a, a an update on life ID and self sovereign identity. Yeah, I mean we're we're plugging along. I mean, the uh, the downturn in rock has, has, and just the markets in general have obviously affected us as well. So we are in fundraise mode right now. Um, but over and above that, we are the the theme that keeps sort of being spoken about and, and sort of talked to is the fact that for self-sovereign identity to come to fruition in its gen, in, you know, in sort of its total sense, you need a highly scalable permissionless blockchain underpinning it. And so there, you know, I think that it is a great opportunity for demonstrating the value that, you know, an identity solution uh, can bring, but there's that contingency, right? Which is, which is our chain being a, decentralized permissionless scalable solution um, is there and so by the way I think there's a lot of people that are in the identity space who would be very eager to begin looking at a solution like life ID given that its place in the market could be you know superior and over and above all the other ones with all of the value that our chain can bring so um, yeah I mean we're 
that's just a kind of a quick update. But what what do you see in terms of market pressure? Are people banging down your door saying, you know, I, I need this. What what will what will it take for me to be able to buy it? Or yeah, the, absolutely. I mean, I can give you a couple of different use cases. The one of the biggest is just doing anything KYC or AML related. That's not really self sovereign identity. That's sort of a uh, productization of what you could do with it. Um, but a couple about about a month or two ago, we got introduced to a gentleman who was uh, I don't know how much of this I can share, but essentially coordinating the farmers and the certifications that they get whenever you egg produce so like a usda for example it turns out that self sovereign identity is the the perfect use case for that problem and it's millions of people that are connected throughout the, the state and the country and so um and and then the store network as well so yeah this people are starting to understand another one that we we're talking to was was someone who's trying to prevent the counterfeiting of luxury goods and so that you can essentially trace it all the way back to the the manufacturer or the distributor and so that's a supply chain component but there's also this sovereign identity component with verified claims and so yeah as people are starting to understand the value that a self-sovereign identity solution can provide people are saying oh this makes perfect sense we can we can apply it in this area of our business and it solves a myriad of different problems. So I don't necessarily think it's like the killer app per se, but I absolutely believe it's this horizontal layer that will touch pretty much every aspect of, of the, the things that write to the blockchain, whether it's IOT, user identity, um, so on and so forth. That's really cool. And yeah, I mean, it, it's almost like a, quasi infrastructure layer which... it sort of is i mean the way that we've always talked about the our relationship to our chain over at life id was that if you think of the blockchain as sort of you know as our chain the blockchain the very first layer the thing right above it was the sovereign identity layer that people plugging into the chain could plug into as well um, you know, and so the way that that manifests itself architecturally over time, we'll, we'll sort of wait and see. Uh, however, I think there's, there's a lot of, you know, sort of widespread vertical opportunity or excuse me, horizontal opportunities to, uh, add value on. Cool. I have a couple of comments. Um, uh, going back, um, uh, I also th consider the storage problem uh, or the storage issues uh, uh, of concern, but we have to be realistic about it as well. And at times we have to think about the blockchain in terms of having a proof or a hash of huge amounts of data so that uh, the data, in essence, becomes indisputable rather than necessarily being on the chain. At the same time, I think storage will be really cheap. And I think that we're going to uh, be engineering ways uh, of allocating storage to keep uh, what we want to keep and what we keep on the chain. Um, uh, based on usage, and uh, also uh, I think we will uh, evolve garbage collection algorithms um, that will uh, uh, prove histories, but uh, uh, remove them from the chain and things like that. So, uh, uh, but. Uh, when it comes to the killer app, uh, I would say, you know, the self-sovereign identity is definitely a prerequisite to every other decentralized application. And if we nail that down, um, and I guess there's two approaches. Uh, Life ID is working from the top down. And in the collab, we're sort of working from the bottom up, building, you know, the user agent on the chain. Um, 
your namespaces of contracts you use and contacts and uh, 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 you know in a more decentralized manner um, uh, and uh, I think these agents on a reliable world computer that is algorithmically constrained to obey your rules uh, is going to empower people in many ways. And uh, uh, I also agree that um, the uh, uh, communications are going to evolve into more of these scenario type scenarios. I think Greg and company is staying away from the social networking aspects of the chain that scenario was doing to avoid legal conflict uh, with scenario. Although scenario uh, is sort of uh, defunct at this point. Um, but it's certainly been a, a, a major application on my mind and other people's that one of the first thing we need to do with our channels <laughs> is to provide a way of organizing them and connecting them with the slacks and the discords and the other things that people are using today in our own communication environment that filters and uh, uh, processes our communications intelligently on our behalf. D David, you're here. You haven't said anything. Do you have any comments on the discussion? David? Okay, <laughs> or a, uh, anybody else, I guess. Rich, did Jim express the kind of thing that you're? No, no I, I, you know, I appreciate, like, like I say, I, I don't come from a technical background and I don't have a deep history with the conversation here. It's only a few months, but I, you know, my imagination has been activated. And, uh, and then I, I think that we're at a critical point, you know, just like, uh, the Casper Labs team saw that there was an opportunity and, and had the money to do something. You know, I think that's, that's a hazard. You know, we're, as, as we approach uh, the ability to deliver um, other team, it doesn't cost that much to come in and, and then uh, participate at the end of the, of the delivery or whatever. Um, but, I, but my feeling is like, so I just, I, you know, I've always used myself as the market lab. And, and, and I've spent all my time trying to learn what's going on here and being activated by the values that I'm picking up. And I think there is a separation between app and platform. And there's certain rules about the platform and what are its economics versus where the economics of the app. I'm paying $25 a month to keep my cell phone going. I would happily give it to our chain uh, if the four or five people that I really want to be able to talk to on the cell phone on a regular basis, uh, if, if there was an app that we could communicate. So like that, but that's a, that's an app economics issue. Um, likewise, people hate that uh, Facebook's, uh, you know, and I guess this is the scenario history, but you know, these, these set, these um, identity storage leveraging, <laughs> Uh, centralization processes and all the sort of social pollution that they cause on a planetary scale, people hate that shit. And they would pay, like if I could pay $5 to do all my groovy stuff with my family members and high school people, you know, all, all, whatever it is that is this intermediation, which again, when I look at what has our chain been to me, it has been all these dialogues on this Zoom platform and all this Discord attention and, and 
So all these resources are going somewhere. It's a business model that's working for someone in the same way that um, row calculus transposed lambda calculus, like the services are already there. Why can't they just be recompiled in a way that I feel good about where my money's going? I mean, it's the concept of smart money that has really activated me all the way down. And I agree. I think life ID, with a self-sovereign ID level so that I can kind of create my trusted community. And if I really trust my community, then com those community members can, can link me to other trusted communities. And now if we could be intelligent about how we coordinate the resources among trusted communities, like everybody wins. And the, there's, the, there's the problem that there's a dark community that we don't like and whatever, and how do we resolve these different tangles when they come into conflict? But we could, we'll figure that out. But in the meantime, if I don't keep supporting Coke Industries with my money, I'm happy, you know? And so I think that, like, I think sometimes we, and I think also if we just look around, like, what are, this has been one of my main criticisms with this community. As, I mean, I love, these are my brothers, you know? I got a lot of beards here. We got, we're older guys. We've lived, we're, we've, we've come through. We probably had learned a lot of the same things in high school. We've had this lifetime. But we're not the world. We're just a set of guys with a particular take on the culture. Our hearts are telling us to be generous. We know a few things, we're trying to reach out. But we need, so anyway, these are some of the problems that I see in this community. I think, and then, you know, there are other problems. There, uh, there's the problem as we near delivery, it becomes, which this could be a good thing. There may be uh, an angel benefactor that swoops in in a time where everything is cheap and helps and everybody goes, ha, ah, this is our, like, and, and maybe they'll be all right. Maybe they'll uh, be able to, you know, have some of the, um, you know, there's, there are a couple of, I think there's some personality-based conflict issues uh, with the community that, um, you know, we're all, we're all incomplete, we're all human and we can all grow and, um, you know, maybe the right figures can come in and, and work with people. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, end of rant. I'm just uh, spouting on a few of the problems that I see here. And again, looking at the resources and, and how uh, I, you know, there's just a lot of love here. And how can we pool that love and work with it and take our individual resources that we've been contributing, but get, are getting shunted off and these other applications that we use in our daily application diet. Why isn't that the founding principle Let's eat our dog food. I'll go back to what Gary said. Let's just keep eating our dog food and do and do as we wish we <laughs> could be done, you know. <clears throat> End of rant. All right, we're all also coming close to the end of the hour. Ned, do you want to say some closing words and maybe uh, other people say some closing words? Yeah, if you know where that angel is living, Rich, uh, <laughs> send up a smoke signal uh, because uh, we need. I, I've always said, you know, it's a, our, our chain is the greatest blockchain platform that absolutely nobody in the industry has heard of. Well, um, there's some re there's specific reasons why that's the case. I, I, yeah, I, 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 place to break it down. I, I don't want to get into that, but yeah, yeah. but I talk to industry insiders. Yeah all the time and nobody's ever heard of us so but it's by design and then the question is how do we work with different designs and um, maybe I, I okay I, I don't know if i agree we'll that that offline. That. but yeah okay. we're wrapping up um right. so I, we, I, need, we, we need to find and help greg find that angel. i'll just say this they're out there's flying around there's a lot of people in this world and so, so let's cast the the fishing pole and reel them in sugar i agree <laughs> instead of vinegar <laughs> totally all right guys alan all right um if uh, there's no more things to add uh we'll wrap it up for this week anybody have any last word otherwise we'll see you at the community debrief thanks everybody thanks